Thank you so much once again for joining us. In case you want to be a part of the conversation for this service, you can just leap over to social media and use the hashtag Daystar Online, or you can send us an email using the link right there, okay? It promises to be a wonderful service today, and we trust that God will speak to your heart. It is a year of new beginnings, new things, and we know that every day and in every way will keep getting better and better. So before we go into the service proper, let's take a quick word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for how far you have brought us this year. We thank you because we know that you will take us even unto the end of the year and beyond. We ask that as we go into this service, Lord, that you speak to our hearts, that you speak to our situations. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you're as excited as I am, let's go get our praise on. Come and give him some shout of praise. Woo!
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a faithful God you are. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Thank you for this moment in your presence. The Bible says in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us in this service. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome to church. As our custom is, we will be praying for our nation, Nigeria. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. It said, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Can we pray this morning and just pray for our nation, Nigeria, that as a nation, God will help us. As we go through this period, this season, this phase in our national economy, let's pray for the help of God for our leaders. Let's pray for the help of God for, our, for people in government, that the Lord will help them to take the right decisions to lead our economy towards prosperity. In Jesus' name, Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for today. We pray for our nation that, Lord, you will help us in the name of Jesus. And for everyone, wherever they are watching from, whether they are on, um, in the hospital or they are watching from their homes, Lord, I pray that your help will reach out to someone this week in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will give them a divine encounter in the service and this week you will bring about a turnaround in their lives, in their families and in their businesses. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome to church. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are so glad to welcome you. This is Daystar, the home of stars and megastars. We have an assignment from God, which is the raising of role models. A role model is someone whose life God has so much transformed that people who knew the person before will begin to notice remarkable changes in the person's life. In case today is your first time joining us um, on TV, we say thank you for watching. So please, there's a link on the screen right now. You can just type it on your phone and give us your details. We have some amazing materials we would like to send to you to help you in your work with God. And we know that your life will never remain the same. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. In case you want to visit any of our centers, at the Oregon Center, which is at Ecosi Road here in Ikeja, we run our service, we run two services right now, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Other details will be displayed on the screen. So please visit us at any time that you feel is convenient for you. Before we take the word, let's take this testimony from one of our members. God is doing amazing things in our lives in Daystar. In case you have a testimony you want to share with us, you can use the link daystarng.org slash testimonies and let us know what God is also doing in you and your family. So let's take this uh, from one of her members. She titled this, God brought back a life. God brought back a life. Now, this was a situation. It was sent in by Osewa. She said, Sometimes last year, while I was busy with renovation work in the office we have just rented, I saw through the window a group of girls trying to resuscitate one of their friends who had just passed out. A few of them already started to cry, thinking that she was gone. Now, this was what God did. She said, I ran out into the scene and asked for her name. At that moment, the Lord took over me as I started to shout, Your spirit comes back now. After about three or so commands, the girl jumped back to life. I have never heard nor prayed such kind of prayer before, so it was obvious the Lord took total control. She said, interestingly, we didn't need the office again. I believe God sent me to that place for the purpose of bringing this lady to life and for him to use me as a channel of pouring out his undying love. Praise the Lord. Oshewa saw a problem. She saw someone that was sick and passing out. Moved by the Spirit, she went and prayed for the person and the Lord brought her back to life. 
wherever you're watching from right now, I'm praying for you right now that the hand of the Lord will touch you. Everything that seems to be dying in your body, I call them back to life in the name of Jesus. And I decree that your testimony is coming and is coming speedily in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So let's receive the word of God. Thank you for joining us today. This is Daystar Christian Center. We call it the home of stars and maker stars. And there's a reason why. God gave us an assignment as a church to raise role models in the society, to raise role models globally, to raise influencers. And God's promise is to so transform our lives, other people want to become like us. And he does this by helping us to develop the character of Jesus, the competence of Jesus, and the capacity of Jesus to add value to people's lives. So thank you so much once again for joining us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the power of God comes on you right there where you are. God knows you true and true. He knows the questions on your heart right now. He knows the issues you're dealing with. He knows the circumstances of your life. I ask that the power of God will rest on your life right now, influence you, spirit, soul, and body. Anything that is not part of what God designed for your life falls away from you now in the name of Jesus. The power that raised Christ from death touches you, spirit, soul, and body. And I declare anything that looks like a malfunction, any sickness or disease, any form of pressure, anxiety, fear, doubt, I declare they are cast away now in the name of Jesus. And the power of God touches you, spirit, soul, and body. Yes. And as we share fellowship together, you will know what God wants you to do next. And I pray in Jesus' name, you will enjoy peace. You will have the joy of God. You will receive the freedom of God to fulfill your destiny. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> All right, like I said, um, our God-given vision in this time is to raise role models, right? Our mission, that's what we do every day to make the vision happen, is to empower you and I to discover, develop, release, and to maximize our potential in God. The key word there is empower. The ministry of this Christian Center is very empowering. And we draw your attention also to our core values. Our core values from the acronym IREAL, I-R-E-A-L, Innovation, Righteousness, Excellence, Accountability, and Love. Now, excellence is very important to us. It is the possession of good quality in an unusual degree. So wherever you find our members, okay, <laughs> expect that we will create order. Expect that we will get the best quality out of whatever resources we have at time. Now we take our core values seriously because we know that we are actually running against the culture. Okay, <laughs> so where there's a culture of mediocrity, a culture of being average or even below average, anywhere you see our stars and mega stars, expect that we will serve with the best quality in mind. We believe that whatever God does not deserve, man does not deserve it. Whatever God deserves, man deserves also because every human is an extension of God. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you'll join us, that you'll be a part of this movement because we believe that more than what a church preaches and teaches, what the church practices is actually what shapes the values and the behavior of church members. And we ask you to join us as we model the values of Jesus to our society and to our world. God bless you and thank you once again for joining us today. Now, we begin a new series, okay, and I'd like us to read from 
Luke chapter 22, verses 41 to 44 in the New Living Translation of the Bible. Let me pray specifically for everyone in Nigeria right now that is a part of this service. And we know there's a lot of insecurity, so much going on, a lot of uncertainty. I pray, first of all, that in the name of Jesus Christ, the peace of God will fill your heart and mind. Secondly, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this season, you will not be wanting for revelation. You will know what to do. God will give you direction for yourself, for your family, for your career, for your organizations. The Spirit of God will guide you. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, nothing will happen to you because the presence of God will be real with you all through this season. I pray in Jesus' name that by the blood of the covenant, anything that looks like violence that sees you will pass over you. We stand on the promise of the word of God to receive safety for you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, together with one heart, we pray for the leadership of our country at all levels that any idea that is not from God will perish. We pray wisdom for the leadership and that in Jesus' name, the country, you know, will find a new direction, build a new foundation and improve the quality of life like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me there. And of course, we pray for every nation that all of us are represented in uh, right now. Uh, every nation we're participating in this service from, I prophesy peace over your nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, in Jesus' name, we pray this season that economies are recovering. We prophesy in Jesus' name that God will bless the economy of your country and bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's go to our scripture for the day. Luke 22, verses 41 to 44, New Living Translation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. We'll title this series, Let Go. Let Go. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. When was the last time you knew what God wanted you to do but it was in conflict with what you wanted to do. Can you think for a few seconds about such a scenario in your life? You had a clear sensing of what God wanted you to do, but then it was in conflict with what you loved to do or what you wanted to do. And then the question I'd like to ask next is, who won? Did God win in that scenario? Or did you win in that scenario? Very important. So as we progress through this series, you're going to learn something. And it's very important. <laughs> that whenever you win and God loses, you lose. And whenever you lose and God wins, you win. I'll take that again. <laughs> when there is a conflict between your desire and God's desire, whenever you win and God loses, you lose. And whenever you lose and God wins, you win. All right. Some of us that you see preaching today did not desire to preach we did not plan to preach <laughs> i mean my whole life was planned to be an engineer <laughs> a civil engineer and a building contractor it was already becoming family tradition 
My grandfather was the leader of all the builders in my hometown. My dad took after him a building contractor, okay? <laughs> I grew up on construction sites. So when I had to choose a course to study, I went for the engineering. Why? Because the business was waiting for me. <laughs> you know, I was going to inherit a, co a, a construction company. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> but here we are today, right? Hmm, 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 hmm. Thank you, Lord. I remember one day during my youth service, my national youth service in Nigeria, uh, I mean, first, in the first place, can you imagine, I, <laughs> usually you would be posted to a construction company if you were a civil engineer like myself, you know, and then it just so happened that the first month which we spend on a special camp, you know, for training, they were choosing the leaders of the Coppers Fellowship, we call it the Coppers Fellowship. You know, <laughs> the fellowship for all the Christian youth coppers in the whole state. And they were choosing who should be the leader. And my, oh my, was I shocked the day they announced <laughs> that I was going to be the leader for the whole state. Oh my God. And whenever they chose you like that, actually, you did not go to work anywhere else. That was the full work that you did for the year. Honestly, when I was informed, <laughs> I said, Lord, what is this about? <laughs> he said, yeah, I called you. <laughs> I called you. So I wanted to do that. In fact, specifically, I wanted to develop your pastoral calling during this year. And you know what? The, one, the calling that I like, the one I discovered first was my teaching gift. And I love teaching. I had fallen in love with teaching. And then people began to say to me, you're a pastor. Oh, my God, I did not like to hear that word. Hey, pastor, I said, no, <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm praying and asking the Lord, so what am I supposed to do with this year? What is this all about? How could they, how did they even know me? <laughs> I wasn't speaking. <laughs> I'm quiet. I was just doing my own business on the camp. And, and you know, the witness I had in my heart was, it's actually your pastoral calling you to develop during this year. So, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. So, that's, you know, that's a journey. But I remember a, a specific day. While I was doing that, honestly, I was writing from Nigeria to some universities in the United States asking for the application package for the master's degree in civil engineering. So I remember this particular day, I got one of those packages and I was looking at this beautiful brochure, you know, <laughs> and I just felt this strong thing, <laughs> you know, in my spirit, you know, like, you want to disobey me? <laughs> Where are you going? What are you doing? You know, I just felt that strong doubt and resistance. In my heart. So, was, so I just stood up, you know, from the bed. I said, it's okay. It's okay, Lord. Whatever it is you want me to do, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Then I, then I decided to trash, you know, to, to throw the whole envelope and everything in it away. So you know what I did in the room? I took it and I just flung it. Not outside. Not in the trash bin, but under the bed. Under the bed. So that just in case <laughs> just in case God changed his mind or something changed along the line I would not be looking for a new brochure okay that's amazing isn't it yes that when God asks us to give something away sometimes we don't give it we don't put it too far yeah when he asks us to give us his life we don't give it too far we keep it nearby so we can pick it up again when we need to pick it up and to fiddle with our own lives and our own plants so further down the line okay um oh yes i eventually insisted i had to do my job my pastor was asking me come and work with us in the church that was after the national youth service i said no 
I'm going to get a job <laughs> as an engineer, okay? Now, remember, I was still working my dad's business. By the time I was done with the studies, there was the economy had gone through a very difficult time, and um, the business was actually not there for me to work in at that time, okay? So I had to find a job. So I insisted, I had to go get the job, you know? <laughs> The money, the money was important. Look, I'm not joking. <laughs> I need the money <laughs> for me and the family and so on. And then eventually, so I, I got the job. And you'll be amazed how the, when the job came in the scenario. One day I woke up in the morning and said, okay, okay, Lord. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go meet my pastor and tell him I'm ready to work as a volunteer in the office. I'll be reporting every day. Yes, at the church office. I went to my pastor on a Thursday evening, you know, on a Thursday evening. Friday, he said, he said, meet me in church on Friday morning. I'm introducing you to everybody. He introduced me, said I was going to take care of the administration of the church. And then on Sunday morning, the strangest thing ever happened. One of the deacons in church approached me and said, there's a construction site. Okay, there's a company building a new high court building for the state. They need a site engineer. Okay, I just wanted you to know so you can put in your application. I said, thank you. Oh my God, I was like, what? I mean, I just told my pastor I was going to be serving at the church office on Thursday, Friday. He introduced me to all the staff in the office, and then Sunday you are bringing this? I said, I hope this is not some temptation from the devil. I've, I've yielded everything to God, you know. I was a youth pastor in the church then, and I took the announcements in the service. That day, you know what I did? I added it to the announcement. I said, I'm, I'm done struggling with God. If this thing is not mine, let it not be mine. I'm just, I'm just done. I, I want to do whatever God wants me to do. So I made the announcement, there is a vacancy somewhere for a site engineer. After the service, the deacon came to me and said, I had you making the announcement. I said, yes. He said, aren't you a civil engineer? I said, yes. He said, I brought the job for you. <laughs> I said, thank you. Anyway, I put him for the job, went for the interview. Uh, and, uh, at first, they said, they told me point blank that they would prefer the other candidate. Uh, and then uh, some days later, the deacon came and said, oh, they said they decided to go for the other candidate. And then some days later, he came back and said, they changed their minds and said they want to hire you. I said, good. I joyfully went on site. But <clears throat> I don't want to stretch the story too long. Eight months later, I was out. <laughs> I went back to church 100%. But this is where I'm going. Telling my dad that I was leaving, you know, the site was going to be tough. I did it. I did it because while on the site, I just knew I was out of my element. People were coming to meet me on site. Can you imagine that for counseling? <laughs> And one day, you know, I was complaining because my director was not happy about it. You, you, you know, he said something about it. And I, and I said, Lord, can you hear what the man is saying? He said, exactly. Your real customers are the ones coming to find you here. The gift is there. It's obvious. <laughs> you know? So I left. And I still remember the day I left that my, my boss, you know, <clears throat> a Muslim was... He, he said he was just surprised, you know, and then the person next to him also spoke and said, I, I just don't understand why you should leave a promising career like this and go into religion. So that's what we don't know. And I said to them that they I really appreciate, you know, the love you're showing to me and your concerns. I said, but you know what? I found one area of life where I function like a computer. And one thing I can tell you is that you will hear about me. Okay. <laughs> so thank you once again. And I said bye-bye and left. Um, but the day I told my dad I was going to leave the site, he was shocked. If I would use the language, 
young people use on social media right now, I would say, a choke. <laughs> oh my God. What? But he remembered. He remembered that when I was born, <laughs> you know, having lost uh, the first child just after he was born, um, they had prayed. And because they prayed and I came, they named me Samuel. And at my dedication, the pastor asked them, do you understand the implication of the name you gave him? So when God needs him, will you be ready to let him go? And they said yes. So to them, this was it. Okay? Remember, what we're going to be addressing is when you have that clash of interests. Clash of wills, clash of desires, clash of plans between you and God. Jesus taught us to pray, you know, in Matthew 6. You know, our Father who is in heaven, that's from verse 6. You know, hallowed be your name. And then he taught us to pray. Yeah. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus found himself in that sport. He found himself in that sport when he was about to die, where he knew it was the Father's will for him to go to the cross because there was a plan to be accomplished. But honestly, who wants to die? Who feels good about dying? I mean, he, 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 he was so tensioned that drops, heavy drops of sweat came from his face and they said they were like drops of blood. And you had the prayer that he prayed. Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass. It was a cup of suffering. <laughs> you know, but he had it. And Lord, not my will, but your will be done. See, Naturally, I'm not the kind of a person that changes my mind easily. So you can just imagine that I've had many of those encounters with God. Remember what we said. You win and God loses, you lose. You lose and God wins, you win. And we'll explain that a whole lot more as we go on with this series. There were some people in the Bible who wanted to follow Christ but there was a clash of wheels. Luke chapter 9, verses 59 to 62, New Living Translation. Luke 9, 59 to 62. He said to another person, Come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you see, a lot of people wanted to follow Jesus. This man was a crowd puller, for God's sake. He was famous. And all everything looked so good and rosy from the outside, but they did not know there was a price to pay to get that amount of influence. So Jesus would confront them. You like their claim, you like the fame, <laughs> but are you willing to pay the price? Anyone that wants to follow me, you know, Mister, this one says I, I want to go bury my father, and and theologians say, well, it looks like he was the firstborn. He wanted to go stay at home so that when his father died, he would inherit the rights of the firstborn. Then he would come do the will of God. And Jesus said, excuse me, you can't position it that way. God has to be first or nothing. Wow. It is not always easy to do the will of God. That is what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes it's like dying. But if you die, you will resurrect. Okay? <laughs> so, you have the story of the wealthy man in Mark chapter 10 who said, Jesus, what do I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, oh, keep all the commandments. He listed the commandments. The man said, I've been doing that from when I was young. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus looked at him and really loved him. 
And I said to him, oh, you still have one thing. Go and sell everything you have. Distribute them to the poor and then come follow me. <laughs> and the Bible says that his face fell and he was sad because he had a lot of possessions. That's it. Conflict between his desires, his plans, his goals, and God's plans and goals. And after he left, Jesus said, you see what I've been saying? <laughs> you see what I've been saying? That it, he said it is very hard for a rich man to make it in God's kingdom. They say, oh my God, who's, who then, who's going to make it? When you get home, please read Mark 10 verses 17 to 31. It's, who's going to make it? Jesus said, oh. What was Jesus saying there? When you have nothing, it's easy for you to consecrate everything to the Lord because there's nothing. It's easy for you to pay the price because the price is worth nothing. You have no asset. You have nothing. <laughs> you have nothing to lose. When, so when God tells you to jump, you jump. But honestly, when you make those sacrifices and then the returns come on those sacrifices, then it becomes increasingly difficult for you to obey God. That's the truth. <laughs> so when you read the Bible, it will seem like God is against people being rich. Absolutely not. Because when the disciples said, then who will be saved? Jesus said, with men it is impossible, but with God it is possible. If you are yielded to God, yielded to the Spirit of God, John 12, 24, 25 will happen to you. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains the way it is. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. That's what Jesus said. <laughs> what you, it's, it's a death and resurrection experience. What you let go of will be, will pale in insignificance will pale in significance compared to what God wants to produce through you. That's it. Jesus then told them, anyone who's left land, houses, brothers, sisters, I mean relationships for my sake and the gospel's sake, he said, they will in this world receive a hundredfold and in the world to come eternal life. Boom. Boom. Listen, never compare yourself with someone who's bearing much fruit supernaturally. You can see it's God that's blessed the person when you don't know the price that they paid. You follow God and obey God's voice. So I ask you once again right now, is there something that God's asked you to do? You know that is the will of God. You know that is the will of God. It's clashing with your plans, your goals, your will. Who will win? God or you. If you win and God loses, you lose. If you lose and God wins, you win. Can we pray just a minute? I want, I want you to talk to God and whatever it is he's asking you to do, can you pray a prayer of consecration and tell him, not my will, but your will be done. Give me the grace to do your will. Give me the grace to obey you, however difficult it may be. Thank you, Lord. Whew, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Well, the one thing God wants every single one to do first is to accept Jesus Christ and the price that he paid on our behalf for sin and to receive forgiveness from God. Can we pray together if you're that honest person who says, my relationship with God is not okay? All right. Can you put your hand on your heart, wherever you may be, at any of our physical locations or <laughs> online? Can you put your hand on your heart or through TV and say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for everyone that said this prayer today. Took the first step in submitting their lives to your will. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord, make it a death and a resurrection experience. <laughs> today marks a new beginning in their lives, like a seed planted in the soil. Heavenly Father, let the power of the Holy Spirit invade their lives and produce through them beings, people that never existed before. Let it be the Christ life showing through them now in their character and in every area of their lives. Thank you because their sins are forgiven. The nature of sin is removed from them now and your nature is in them. And we're grateful for this miracle because Jesus said there's celebration in heaven when this happens. So thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Congratulations. If you're on TV, I believe there's an email coming to you. Please send us uh, your information. Just let us know you made the decision that you made today. God bless you. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, in this Star Christian Center, we have a covenant with God. We're covenant people. And that covenant tells us everything that belongs to us belongs to God. Everything that belongs to God belongs to us. That is the secret of our prosperity, of our blessing. But God tests us first to see whether we'll be stingy, greedy with him. I want to ask you to please go ahead. Let's do our giving right now like we do every week. As God blesses us, we actually give every day in the Star Christian Center as the blessings come in. Uh, but we like to do planned giving. We don't do haphazard giving. It's not when we say it's time to give that we begin to rack our heads. Actually, we give in proportions to God and we prioritize him in our finances. The information is on the screen. It's on our website. Please go ahead and give. You may choose to do recording giving. The link is also available for that. And that means once you put the information in there, you know how much you want to be given every week or every month. It just goes automatically. You don't need to bother yourself. You focus on your worship with God. God bless you. And in this Star Christian Center, every single day we're assisting people who are in difficulty. God bless you for making it happen. I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus Christ that before you ask, like God said, he will answer. That this week, God will position people to help you. And the ones he positioned already will remember you now. Doors of favor will open for you. Good news will come your way. Enjoy divine protection, perfect health for your family, peace, and the kind of joy that only God can ever give. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's receive the day style praise team as we worship. Fortress. He's our shepherd. He's our buckler. Our cornerstone. Come and lift up your voice wherever you are. We worship him. Give him some worship. Give him some praise.
disappoint you. I know for me that was a powerful one and I'm sure that it was exactly the same for you. I'm sure that you're able to take one thing or the other to take you through the week and perhaps even through the rest of your life. Thank you for joining us. It's still Daystar Christian Center. And then if you want to say something to us, remember use the link there, okay, to send us an email or just nip over to social media to send whatever it is you want to say, your questions, comments, suggestions, prayer requests, testimonies, whatever it is. Remember to use the hashtag Daystar Online, okay? So in case you want to give also, the links are secure. You can give whatever it is you want to give. It's a free will giving. You are not compelled. Just do whatever it is that makes you comfortable. Thank you once again for joining us. We pray that as you go into this week, God will go with you. The power of God will rest upon you. His hand will rest upon you. He will touch whatever situation it is that you're dealing with. And we trust that he will help you to get through it and get through it victorious. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Introducing Daystar Mobile. At Daystar Christian Center, the most recurrent word is change. Timely and inspired change is the mark of a healthy church. That is one reason we are introducing Daystar Mobile. Daystar Mobile is where you find everything you need to connect to Daystar Christian Center and the Daystar family. Daystar Mobile allows you to follow the church activities, events, Bible reading, calendar, and stream live services on the go. Locate a home cell fellowship around you, make online offering, know the latest events happening in church, and read the amazing testimonies from the ministry of Daystar Christian Center. Welcome to Daystar Mobile App, powered by Daystar Christian Center.